Good morning. It's time for us to begin our worship services, and we uh, appreciate your attendance this morning. Thank you if you're joining us here in the building or if you're joining us virtually. And uh, we will begin our service this morning by singing number six in our hymn book. And the words will also be displayed here on the screen in front of us there. Number six. And let us all sing together. <clears throat> holy, holy. This morning, let's sing number 432. Number 432. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a prayer. Should soul 
shall find rest beyond the in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning, humbling ourselves, thanking you for the blessings that we have in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, your only begotten Son. Father, we ask that you be with all those on our prayer list. We thank you for the healing that you have done. We ask that you would continue to be with those that are still fighting health problems and other issues. Father, we ask that you be with all of our number that are on the road this morning, that you'd watch over them, keep them safe, and return them to us. Father, we ask your prayers, our, we ask your blessings on our elders and our deacons and all those who serve here in any way. Father, we ask that you'd be with our projects that we're trying to accomplish, the food pantry, the prison ministries, and all the other projects that we've undertaken. Father, we thank you for all those people you send our way that might visit. Father, we pray that everything we do and say will be in accordance with your word. And Father, we know that you answer all things and take care of all things. Now, Father, as we go forth in our worship, may it be so that it pleases you and brings glory to your name. For it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. As we prepare to share in the Lord's Supper together, let's notice number 134. <clears throat> number 134. Off we come together, off we sing and pray, here we bring our offering on this holy day. Help us, Lord, thy love to see. May we all in truth and spirit worship thee. May
Does uh, anyone need a cup of bread? It's good to be back. We were gone for a couple Sundays, so it's nice to see you all here. I have a couple short readings uh, this morning for a communion set. I have with me a little coin this morning. Uh, those in the military know what these are. Uh, it's kind of a unit coin. It's referred to as a challenge coin. In the Boy Scouts, we used to carry a coin in our pocket. It was a Boy Scout coin, and we would put it in one pocket, and when you do your good deed for the day, you'd switch it to the other pocket and back again to remind you of that good deed. These coins are kind of a memorial if you will. This one, I attended a function yesterday, and it's marked on this coin as the 30th year commemorative. We've been getting together for 30 years, the same event, and it was kind of special because this was the last one that will come about. I saw friends, I had one friend come in from Delaware, all the way from Kansas, drove two days to be here. Another friend drove for almost eight hours from Colorado because these type of events mean something. In the book of Matthew and Luke and Mark, they describe that Last Supper. In the book of John, we see John writing and recording those things that happened during the supper, such as the washing of his feet. And that's what Jesus did. And of course, him speaking to his disciples. And one of the phrases that we have here in Matthew, this is verse 29 in chapter 26, and it's writing here, and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, but I say to you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We have a little antidote, if you will, if you take it that way. In the book of Acts in chapter 2, we look at verse 42. And, of course, this verse is written in here. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Because what Jesus did at that Last Supper, he put together for us a memorial, something that we should remember. And we see in the book of Acts when the, chi, the, the church was established and Peter laid out the keys to the kingdom, if you will, and he opened the gates to heaven. And they came together as a body, and there were 15 nations that are listed here in Acts chapter 2. So there were people represented from all around the world. And we know as being members of the body, there are Christians all around the world. And we share this on the same first day of the week. Not simply by scripture, Acts chapter 20 and 7, Corinthians chapter 16, you know, and here, but also tradition of how the church worked for centuries. And this was done every first day of the week. Because Jesus wanted us to remember him and his sacrifice that he gave for us. He died for the entire world on that cross for the forgiveness of sins. We take this small cup, and in the top portion, if you will, there's a small piece of unleavened bread. And Jesus, of course, said, he, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. Take and eat this, all of you, because this is part of the kingdom of heaven. This is my body given for the world. It is a memorial. We all have these things, family reunions, coins, plaques, whatever it is. But what we have in this memorial is in our hearts. And that's what the Lord wants to do when we take this together and we share it. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
You bring us together on this day that we can share this as family and friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. We look at this unleavened bread understanding that it was the body given by Jesus on that terrible day. And he freely went to the cross. He allowed himself to be nailed there and hung between heaven and earth. And Heavenly Father, he gave his life for us. Let's be capable of looking at that, understanding that, and being thankful that we can remember what Jesus did for us, each individual, for the sins that we committed. Blessed be his son. In Jesus' name we pray. Back in Acts chapter, Matthew chapter 26, the verse that I read used the phrase, the fruit of the vine. And in Matthew chapter, or Acts chapter, excuse me, John chapter 15, he talks about the vine and the branches, because that's where the fruit comes from. And that's what's extended to us. But he speaks to his disciples about the fruit of the vine and this that we have in this cup. Because we know that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He asked for this cup to pass from him. But he went ahead and he did what his Father willed. We take this cup remembering the blood shed by Jesus on that cross. And through the blood of Jesus we are washed from our sins. So this memorial we remember, the sacrifice he gave of his own blood and his own life. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come before you thanking you for the blessing of your son, his willingness to come to this earth, to be here with us as human, to share in the trials and the temptations that we have. And Heavenly Father, he went to that cross freely, carrying that cross, agonizing, shed his blood. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for his blessing. Be with us, Heavenly Father, at this time that we might be able to do these things according to your will and your spirit, that this fruit of the vine we take remembering Jesus and all the things that he did for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We take time in our service to give back to what, to the church, those things that the Lord has blessed us with. And we look at the sacrifice that Jesus did and gave for all of us, and we have to remember that we also have to sacrifice. Because there are those out in the world who do not have the gospel. Sometimes they do not have the needs of everyday life. That's why we've had a food pantry. This is why we have a Bible class. We have studies we put out together, but we share these things that people can be taken care of. And the Lord blesses us with many things, and it is the first here in this place that we gather together as brothers and sisters. From this place, all these offerings go out, and the work that we do is important. We, as the woman who had the two mites, and she put them in the little box, we have a box at the back of our building. So you take your two mites today when you walk out of this building and you drop it into that box. Because as Jesus said, those rich men gave from their plenty. She gave all that she had. The Lord doesn't ask us to give everything we have, but we try to in the best manner we can. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can be blessed in such a way. You give us more than we need. You give us things, Heavenly Father, that we do not look forward to. You give us things that we can remember. And you let us remember you always in our lives. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless us, that we might be able to bless others around us. 
that we can look and talk to others and say, Jesus is my friend. But more than just Jesus is my friend, Jesus is my Savior. And I want you to be saved also. So the things we share here, the needs that we meet with other people, we can bring Jesus into their lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Song of Encouragement today will be number 578 after the lesson, number 578. And before the lesson, we'll sing number 227. Number 227. Shall we stand together, please? 227. We have heard the joyful sound Jesus saved. Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tears, our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Waft it on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back ye ocean caves. Earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Thank you. Please be seated. I've been asked to read three scriptures from the 119th Psalm this morning. First one is verse 125. <clears throat> the 119th Psalm. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. <clears throat> Verse 30. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And verse 169. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well, as well as can be expected. It's a nice day outside. A little bit of dew, a little bit of rain. A nice way to wake up. As always, would you bow with me, please? God, as we come before you to hear your words, let them do what you have decided them to do. Let them again not be from me, but from you. Touch the heart, touch the mind that you have decided them to be. Let your will be done on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I start, I have a simple story to read from you. And it's, the story is called A Deck of Cards. During the North... African campaign, a group of soldiers had been on a long hike. They came to a town, and the next day, being Sunday, some of the soldiers went to church. And after the chaplain had read the prayer, the text they opened, and they started to read. Some of the soldiers had prayer books, and they took them out, but one had a deck of cards. 
And so he spread the cards out. His sergeant saw what he had out and said, Soldier, put away the cards. After the services were over, the soldier was taken prisoner and brought before the provost marshal, the judge. The marshal asked, Sergeant, why have you brought this soldier here? For playing cards in church, sir. And what have you to say for yourself, son? Much, sir, replied the soldier. The marshal said, I hope so, because if not, I shall punish you more than any other soldier is punished. The boy said, sir, I have been on a long march for six days. I have neither a Bible nor prayer book, but I hope to satisfy you, sir, with the purity of my intentions. And with that, the boy began his, soldier, his story. You see, sir, when I look at the ace in the deck of cards, it reminds me that there is but one God. And the deuce tells that the Bible is divided into two testaments, the old and the new. When I see the trace, the three, I think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when I look at the four, I think of the four evangelists who preached the Gospels. There were Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. And when I see the five, it reminds me of the five wise virgins who trimmed their lamps. There were ten of them. Five were wise and saved. Five were foolish and were shut out. When I look at the six, I knew that there are six days God made this great heaven and earth. And the seventh tells me that on the seventh day he rested from his great work. He called it holy. And when I see the eight, I think of the eight righteous people God saved when he destroyed this earth. There were Noah, his wife, three sons, and their wives. And when I see the nine, I think of the lepers, our Savior cleansed. Nine of the ten did not return and thank him. And of course, when I see the ten, I remember the Ten Commandments that God handed to Moses on the stones. When I see the king, sir, I know that there is one king of heaven, God Almighty. When I see the queen, I think of the Virgin Mary. When I see the jack, I think of the devil. When I count the spots in the deck of cards, I find the number 365, the days in the year. There are 52 cards, the number of weeks in a year. 13 tricks, the number of weeks in a quarter. There are four suits, the number of weeks in a month. The 12 picture cards, the number of months in a year. So you see, sir, my deck of cards serves me not as a Bible or almanac, but also as a prayer book. That was and is a song you can find, but the author is the soldier that tells the story, and his name is Tex Ritter. You can also find him as T. Texas Tyler if you're looking for that also. And I start that one to get you thinking about how people understand each other. But I'm not going to talk about how we understand each other as human beings. I'm going to talk about how you and God have an understanding of your purpose in this world. You might at times in your life ask yourself questions. Why is this happening to me? Why? Why? You might also have friends that ask you, well, that's happening because. You might want things to happen. You might pray about them and you might ask about them. You might think long and hard. You might plan, I'm going to do this. And we let God make that decision. It's the same thing with understandings if I was to flip back a few slides and I would point up and say, what does this symbol mean on the song chart? I will tell you right now, 
it is not my forte to tell you what all those pointy arrows and lines that go up, down, left, right, and those funny shapes on there, and what those notes mean. I don't know. I don't care. It speaks Greek to me. But my three in my family are all band members that play instruments that can read that like it's a second language. And when they all start talking in the car, I just fade off and don't add anything to it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my forte. I don't understand it. Yesterday I had the chance to go to a band meet and while we were in the transition, again, not my forte. I don't march, don't play an instrument. I have no clue how they judge these things. So I don't know. I'm just there as I tease them and say, I'm just there for the muscle. I get to move things around and help kind of keep the herd of cats moving in the right direction as we go around there. So yes. And one young lady looked over at her mom and was like, hey, who's preaching tomorrow? And the mom does what moms do. They kind of head tilt, and they point over to me. And then this young lady, she's here today, but I won't pick on her or anything like that. But she knows who she is. But yes, but she can read those notes and if you were to ask her what that meant, she's like, well, it does this and it plays this on my instrument. I can't. So understanding that there is times where you're not going to understand what God has for you. I always like this one, these two verses. And it reminds me of the importance of God. And I enjoy them from Matthew 6. But especially verse 10 there where it says... Your kingdom come, your will be done. A hard thing to pray for a lot of us when we are control freaks, or the alpha type as some people like to refer to them. We want it to be our way. We don't want it to be someone else's decision for us. But we have to accept it. But sometimes it's not ours. When I get to, or when I did, we get to select, where's the next place we want to go? And we put our list down, but sometimes we put something way at the bottom and God said, nope, that's it, you're going here instead. And our trip to New Jersey, and we were like, why are we going here? It was one of those, out of the blue. It wasn't even on our list. It wasn't something we picked, but it was God's decision for us. And we met a lot of great people and saw that the church in the East Coast, even though they might not be as close as they are here, they still exist and there's great people there. But another one, when you buy a car, before you buy the car, are you thinking, how can I use this to glorify God? When you buy a, a house or rent a home, do you ask the same question, what is God's purpose for me to live here? What can I do to spread the word, show what God has done for me? Verse 18, and I'll read. We know that everyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are all children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding so that you will know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. By being in his Son of Jesus Christ, he is the true God and the eternal life. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's known. We understand that as Christians. But how do we gain an understanding after we've accepted and we've been baptized? One of those funny things we do in the Army is we create acronyms. So POEL or PAPEL. I was playing around with it a couple ways. I'll hit these. Pray. Observe, patience, and learn. From Ephesians chapter 1, 
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the righteous riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. It's pretty simple to pray, ask, then also obey. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures from Luke. As you think about this, you're observing the world around you. Not how people again, but what you see of the Lord, the God. Army calls it situational awareness to check everything in your surroundings. One of those things that we did before you got out of vehicle on the road was you had your five and your 25 is what we called it. So your first scan around side your vehicle was at the five meter yard. The next look, you would look out 25 meters to see if you saw anything that was going to hurt you. Understanding from our story that the six, when you see it, reminds you that in six days, everything that we see, God created. Six days to do all of those things, from the depths of the sea to as high as the birds fly. The next one is patience from Philippians. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your heart, guard your heart, and your mind in Jesus Christ. How do you develop patience outside of asking for it? You could say you can have children. That develops patience. You can do things that are hard in your life and you challenge yourself if you've ever decided to run a marathon which I have not but is one way you can do it if you do something that's outside of your comfort zone you will challenge yourself if I ask some of you to build this electronic stuff in front of us a few of you could do it a few more would say that's impossible but you could say the same thing of building this building for a few of you. Okay, it's simple. Give me the materials and we can do it. Others, this is impossible. Well, one skipped, so I apologize. But we'll continue on. So last I want you to think about is how you learn. Reading the Bible is a great way. No matter how many times you've read a scripture, it will come to you in a different light. Maybe reading a different version might help. You can listen to your mentors, speak with others. They might challenge your Bible knowledge, and it helps to improve yourself. One of the things I did the last few weeks is substitute in the high school, in the middle school, and a couple of the elementary schools here. So I got a chance to realize it myself. I would only get a few minutes with each student to impact them in a different way. Some students I would get seven hours with. Other students I would only get maybe 40 minutes worth. And if you've ever been in a classroom, you understand that four or five kids always want to be rambunctious and you have to the new word is redirect their efforts. Others, sometimes you have to get on to them and that's fine, go to the office and we'll call down and let the vice principal deal with you because you don't want to listen to me. Some tell me I'm mean or I'm strict or I'm loud. They refer to it as, you're yelling at us. No, I have a command voice and it blares very well. Other ones... They're the good kids. They're the kids that do what you ask, that want to be there, that want to learn. Those are the ones that definitely impact when they raise their hand and they ask, how do you do whatever it is their question is? 
but both of them I've had a chance to impact. I have to be a positive impact on them, no matter if they're trying to be bad or being good. Another way to think about it, and again, I love country music, so you'll have to deal with this, is there's a song that Tim McGraw sung, Live Like You Were Dying. One of the verses, one of the lines, is someday I hope you get the chance to live like you are dying. I've worked on it for many years to make every one of my impacts with other people, my conversations, the last that I might ever have with them. It's not an easy thing when you're 40 something years old. I got the opportunity to go with my grandmother, and a few of you met her a few weeks ago if you haven't before. She's 89 now, 89, and can still tell you how many grandkids, kids, et cetera, et cetera. Now she has great grandchildren. And I was in there when she was talking to her doctor and she surprised the doctor. She said, oh yeah, you know, am I active? And she goes, I think I'm active, but you can ask my grandson, which I said, yes, she's active. She still lives by herself, cleans her own house will serve and get you food, etc. But then the doctor was like, hold on, this is, so she said, yep, I've got six of my kids, I have 30-something great-grandchildren, and I have now two great-grandchildren. And then he's, well, wait a minute, you, you missed a generation. And she's, oh yeah, I've got um, some number of grandchildren, which I'm part of. But it's just funny when the doctor just stopped there and had to look at her for a moment and realize it, because she can remember Every one of our names, our birthdays, for all, about a hundred of us now, that have all come from her as a grandmother. So one of those things that you do across your lifetime, and that's why I share those things with you. Because even she, at 89, realizes that every day is important. And I've tried to mimic that. But I'll also put it to you this way. Jesus Christ, when he started his message, had three years that he knew to make an impact with everyone in the Gospels that he ever talked to. He never said, I'll see you later. He's never said, next time. He said, you need to do this, or this is the consequences. We need to make every one of our interactions the same way because our understanding needs to come from God. Our purpose needs to be God's purpose through us. The last point I will make to help you think about it, we have flashlights. Flashlights send a a beam of light and light and brighten the area. But most of it is just a body with batteries. We need to be the body, just like a flashlight that has the batteries, that when turned on, shines God, not us, not the body, not the batteries, not everything else, but they see God through us. We don't need to waste other people's time. As I get ready to close, and as I like this one, with the cross on one side, if there is a need, either online or out here in public, that you need to talk to somebody. I'm positive one of the elders, if you're not uncomfortable with someone, me, or anyone else here that will listen to you, they'll talk about their story, what brought them to Christ. They will listen to you. Pray with you. Open up the Bible and study with you. There is a lot of needs in this world and there's a lot of things that we all have and each of us at a different time. It is a scary thing when you think about it to come forward. Well, I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm also going to say type it in online. I need if you need to go back behind, I'm positive that Richard or any one of the elders will see you go back and you can talk with them back there privately. Don't be scared of always having to come up here. We get to be part of God's understanding of each other right here, right now, as we come 
and we get ready to sing this song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and and obey then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or will walk by his side in the way what he says we will do where he sins we will go never fear only trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Thank you. Please be seated. What a great day. How many times have we sang that song it's just and it still is there and it's alive <laughs> that's the great thing about music uh, we have a drop pin we have visitors we have Joey Dotson who is here visiting from uh, uh, Fort Rucker Alabama and Nikki Gantz is also here from um, uh, Alexander City Alabama uh, and so it's great to have both of them and the new old family is here after being gone for many many months and it's great to have them for sure um, I've got one final thing to each and everyone here thank you thank you for being my friend thank you for being my brother thank you for making my life more bearable on this journey thank you for knowing that you will be here for me thank you for being you I thank God you are a part of my life. And God says in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 7, So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort for love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full, of cord, uh, full accord and of one mind. Good morning again. Before we have our closing prayer, of course, we have, uh, there is a Monday night Bible class. I want to thank Danny for taking it for the last two Monday nights. And uh, you had a request to do the Jewel Miller film strips. So we're going to try to start that tomorrow night. So if you'd like to come and see that, we will have that set up. I was already told I have a list of questions from some of the students that are there. I told them to write them down, type of thing. But anyway, I'm sorry? I don't know yet. I got a flashlight that works pretty good. It's good to see everyone here today. And yes, welcome back, our family back there and our visitors and everything. Let's go to our God in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you again thanking you for all the blessings you give to us. The blessings of visitors, the blessings of family, returning, friendships, Heavenly Father, that we cherish. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place that we can gather. Be with us as we go from this place this week, this afternoon, that we can show ourselves as members of the body of Christ, that we can gather people in as a hen does her chicks. But Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can share your gospel with others, that we can share the comfort that's in Christ, the compassion that is what Jesus did. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for those things. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with those who are on our prayer list. And the words that were said here this morning by Brother Brian, that those things sink in, that we remember those who are ill, that we can care for them, 
pray for them, hold their hand if need be, but show that we care in Christ. Heavenly Father, be with us as we leave this place this day, thanking you and blessing your name for all the things that you have given to us and that you take care of us in this life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are dismissed.